and we will hope that level heads will prevail. This was a great video. Uh, I think this was very fair. Johnny, Johnny Harris has a, has a history of covering. I, I'm telling you, man, no matter how swagged out of a white boy you are, no matter how CIA you are, when you fucking go to the West Bank, other than Matty Iglesias, it seems, because I didn't even know he had been to the West Bank, but he has. One shit. The war between Israel. Johnny Harris is my religion, dude. My fucking goat. My king. Mr. Former Mormon, dude. Holy shit. He's about to solve this. Okay, let me tell you something. Johnny has actually been, I believe, to Gaza as well as I know he's been to the West Bank. So I don't think that he's going to, I don't think that he's going to take like the classic liberal posture on this, okay? I would be very shocked. I haven't watched this video yet. But I would be very fucking shocked if he's just like a, a hyper Zionist take here. Israel and Hamas is escalating as Israeli troops begin their ground invasion into the Gaza Strip. The Gaza but this war isn't just between these two sides. It actually involves multiple countries and groups, all with different interests and capabilities, and all with the power to influence this war. In this video, I want to show you each of these groups. I want to show you who they are, what they want, what their calculations are, and to show you how this war... Bro, instead of fucking coming in here and saying that to me, why don't you go watch whatever fucking streamer's community you're coming from? You know what I mean? Here, I'll make it, have, I'll make it easier for you between Israel and Hamas is threatening to spread, spread to the rest of the region, but also to the rest of the world. And U.S. officials are worried that this could escalate beyond just a conflict between the Israelis and the Palestinians and could in fact become a regional war. The Gaza Strip is one of two Palestinian territories. It's home to over two million Palestinians. And it's different than the West Bank. The West Bank is cut up and governed by a mix of Israeli occupation and a Palestinian national government. Gaza, on the other hand, is governed by Hamas, an Islamist organization with a militia wing whose mission is to resist and oppose Israel to fight against Israeli occupation of Palestinians by whatever means necessary, including when terrorism I and do violence. Do not defend Russia Hamas chose at all. Low key, this is already low key. This is already a a a, a better way to describe the situation than like ninety percent of liberals. Like he he didn't immediately go. They're barbaric terrorists who just want to do bad things because they're bad guys. So who, we'll see. No, terrorism and violence is a weapon that, uh, that the al Qassam brigades and, and Hamas absolutely utilizes. This much is 100% true. He didn't even say terrorist group. He said a militia wing. October 7th, 2023, to launch their most deadly attack, breaking down the border wall surrounding the Gaza Strip and massacring civilians in a ground and rocket assault on Israel. This terrorist attack killed an estimated 1,400 Israelis, and Hamas ended up taking 229 hostages back to the Gaza Strip. Hamas is expert at using tunnels and basements to, to hide people, including hostages. It was a senseless slaughter of innocent lives, and it was the most deadly attack in Israel's history. Immediately after oh, the attack, is Israel declares war on Hamas. They call up a reservist force of 360,000 soldiers and they immediately start bombing the Gaza Strip. Thousands of airstrikes and Gaza is- No, it, it's no longer 1,400, but like literally he I posted this yesterday. Um, the, the, the new number is 1,200, but that's as of today. So he posted this yesterday. So how the fuck would he have known that they- uh, change the number. Is now cut off from electricity, water, and food. Their stated mission is not just to strike back against Hamas, but to end the group forever. Israel's furious strikes on Gaza are laying waste to entire neighborhoods. Israel says that the north of the Gaza Strip is now an evacuation zone that they're going to bomb. And they tell the one million Palestinians living there to leave, to evacuate towards the south. <laughs> But Palestinians can't leave this area. Their southern border is with Egypt, and Egypt has vowed that they will not let anyone in. The Prime Minister made this point very clearly. I love that, the, I mean, this part is, is also not due to, uh, you know, 
Egypt has no autonomy in this process. I, I mean, I'm sure they wouldn't want the Palestinians in there to begin with, but like, even if they did, there's no, like Egypt isn't like personally going, yeah, I really fucking don't want the Palestinians. And then everyone's like, oh, I guess we can't do anything about that. It's just like Egypt is a fucking client state. By saying that Egypt is willing to sacrifice, quote, millions of lives to avoid allowing Palestinians into Egypt. So the airstrikes continue. And Israel says that they are preparing for a ground invasion to send troops into the Gaza Strip to target Hamas fighters and leaders. This is when Israel's most important ally swoops in. Joe Biden, the US president, has landed in Israel. President Joe Biden travels to Israel and urges the Israeli prime minister to not make the same mistake that the US made after 9-11, sending in troops to wage a grueling and doomed war against highly motivated fighters, and eventually ending up fighting in dense cities where militants and civilians blend together. The U.S. learned that no matter how powerful your military is, this kind of warfare is brutal and very difficult to achieve any kind of victory. The U.S. is also worried that if Israel invades Gaza, that it will trigger a broader conflict in the Middle East. And this is where we need to zoom out to get a bigger picture look at the rest of this region. War between Israel and Hamas threatens to explode into the wider region. If we want to understand the geopolitics of this region, you have to look at Iran. Iran is the country that wants to be the most powerful and influential country in the Middle East. This puts them in direct conflict with Israel, a powerful country that is nuclear armed, that is also a foothold for the United States. Another point for Johnny. Um, another point for maybe Johnny's not CIA Harris to admit that Israel has nukes. I mean, that's that's a, that's not an admission that, you know, liberals will will state easily or willingly did he lose his cia sponsorship i don't know mormon who also worked for nato in 2009 yes this is true um the iran bait is minus one i mean it's true iran does want to be a regional power iran is a regional power uh the only the only major difference here is that like iran sees israel as a continuation of american power in the region which is true I don't think he'll say that though, maybe. To project its power in the Middle East, in Iran's neighborhood. But that, so there's that, this deep enmity between Iran and Israel, and by extension, the United States. Instead of attacking Israel directly, which would be a catastrophe, Iran opposes Israel by funding a network of anti-Israel and anti-Jewish militia groups and governments around the region, giving them money and weapons as part of what they call the axis of resistance against Israel and, by extension, the United States. One of these groups in the axis of resistance is Hamas. Iran supports Hamas by giving them training, money, and, <laughs> very importantly, weapons. Like the thousands of rockets that Hamas fired into... <laughs> I mean, they're definitely some of them are anti Jewish, they're anti Semitic, I guess. Like, fine, sure. Israel on October 7th as a part of their attack. This axis of resistance exists to keep constant pressure on Israel, to make Israel think twice about ever attacking Iran. Iran needs Israel to think that this network is a credible threat. I mean, to be fair, uh, to Iran, which, you know, of course, because I'm a tanky and I love Iran uh, personally. Um, when you say, like, Iran is anti-Semitic and anti-Jewish and not anti-America, you're losing the plot because, like, are they also anti-Islam? Like, what the fuck? They fight, literally, like, Saudi-backed militias in the entire region. They fight everybody. They fight anyone and everyone that is, they fight anyone and everyone that is considered uh, an American. Oh, this guy just chucked a fucking, this guy just chucked a, a delivery package right over the fucking gate. What the fuck? I just watched it happen. They also have people who had Saudi funding. Lamar, they're just destabilizing. Yeah. Iran is anti-white racist. Fair. 
threat that they will act if Israel does something that they don't like. So as Israel bombards the Gaza Strip, killing all of these civilians, Iran and their axis of resistance feels pressure to respond. So you start to see all these small scale attacks all throughout the region, targeting Israeli and American targets. Increasing attacks by Iranian proxies on US forces stationed in the region. Most of this action breaks out in Israel's northern border with Lebanon, home to Iran's most powerful proxy group called Hezbollah, a political and military organization with tens of thousands of well-trained soldiers. They're armed to the teeth and they're funded by Iran. They this video is so OSINT porn, but it's actually pretty well done so far. Have over a hundred thousand missiles of varying ranges, capable of hitting almost all of Israel. Hezbollah is actually a much greater threat to Israel than Hamas is in Gaza. And in the weeks following True. the attack, Hezbollah shows that they're ready to fight by shooting at Israeli military installations along this border region. Israel strikes back at Hezbollah in these border skirmishes, threatening an escalation. They drop bombs on two airports in Syria, airports where Iran sends weapons and supplies to Hezbollah. It looks like an escalation, especially as Israel moves most of its soldiers up here, not to Gaza, while tens of thousands of Calling Hezbollah Iran proxy is manga? No, it's not. It's true. Come on, dude. What? Come on, come on, come on. It is. I mean, it, it has its own, like, civil governance uh, and, and duties in Lebanon, but yeah, it is. It's literally fucking funded by Iran, just like the Houthis are. Israeli citizens are evacuated. Attacks by Hezbollah on Israel are continuing with its fighters destroying an Israeli... I mean, I can't... Dude, if... if yeah, if... No, allies, yes, but proxy, no. Come on, dog. It's like saying fucking Israel is America's proxy. Like, it's... it's Yes. Tank. The U.S. continues to urge Israel not to invade Gaza, fearing that a ground invasion would cross Hezbollah's red line and provoke them to invade from the north, turning this into a two-front war, which could boil over into a three-front war if Palestinians in the West Bank rise up and start fighting with Israeli settlers and soldiers who occupy the West Bank. The key to a spread of the conflict lies on the Israel-Lebanon border. If that becomes a second front, the entire region region will then feel the heat one of the paradoxes of global conflict is Hassan that is all, so fucking wrong you know nothing about the situation in Yemen at least admit to that it's really noxious well what is your uh, uh, what am I what am I wrong about in Yemen that even when all of the sides don't actually want a full-scale war, they have nothing to gain from it, a full-scale war can break out anyway. And in this case, what might not be obvious is that Hezbollah and Iran actually don't want a full-scale war with Israel, which would bring a war to Lebanon, a country that has been crumbling under economic turmoil did, in recent years, say, yeah, for man, which some Lebanese movies. blame Hezbollah. A war would deepen this crisis and deepen the resentment for Hezbollah and threaten their ability to operate in Lebanon. And yet, as Israeli jets continue to bombard the Gaza Strip, Hezbollah and their Iranian sponsors have to show that they are willing to act, that they are a credible threat, that they have red lines that are being crossed. This is the deadly game of chicken that escalates conflicts like this. This is what turns them into a situation that no one can control. But another paradox of global conflict is that some threats of force can actually diffuse the tension, can stabilize an escalating conflict. At least that's the bet that the United States made here. The Pentagon's deploying 300 more troops to the Mideast. While Israel was still debating whether or not to send troops into Gaza, the U.S. deploys two naval strike groups, one off the coast of Israel and the other off the coast of Iran. These groups are made up of huge aircraft carriers, accompanied by supply and warships. We're talking 15,000 sailors in total, standing watch as this conflict escalates. The U.S. also readies its missile defense systems and prepares soldiers for deployment. It's a huge show of They don't even prepare them for the top of the hour ad break, though, which is pretty fucked up, in my opinion. Which comes at the top of every hour, you know? Here's the three-minute ad break now. Force. And it's the U.S. trying to use its superior military power to send a signal to Iran and its proxies that they are there and they are watching and that they will be dragged in to any escalating conflict. To any country, any organization, anyone thinking of taking advantage of this situation, I have one word, don't, don't.
And then, against the warning of the United States, uh. Israel sends troops into Gaza. Israeli troops and tanks advanced further into Gaza. That's crazy. It's almost like, uh, you know, they're doing whatever the fuck they want. Gaza engaged in urban combat. The ground invasion is more limited than expected, but it's what the Israeli prime minister is calling the second stage in their plan to completely destroy Hamas and its leadership. As Israeli troops flooded into Gaza, the big question was, would Hezbollah act? Would they invade from the north? And surprisingly, they didn't. And this shows us three things that weren't as clear before. Number one, it shows that the price of- It's not surprising. It's unsurprising that they didn't invade. It's not even just the carriers. It's also the fact that, you know, they don't want entire fucking, uh, in entire blocks, entire cities to be leveled. I think that's probably the reason, the major reason um, they don't have, they their economy is not looking too hot currently. The war for Lebanon is huge and that Hezbollah is taking that into account. They stand accountable to the Lebanese people and Lebanon does not want war. It also shows us that Iran is hesitant to use Hezbollah in this context. Hezbollah is their most powerful card to play in deterring Israel from ever attacking them. And in using it to protect Palestinians, they will weaken Hezbollah's role as a deterrent. Or to say it bluntly, what this shows us is Iran cares much more about its own security than it does about the plight of the Palestinians. But the third thing that this shows is that Wait, what did he say about that? Bluntly, what this shows us is Iran cares much more about its own security than it does about the plight of the Palestinians. It's true. Fair. Fair assessment. I agree. But the third thing that this shows is that Hezbollah believes that Israel will not be successful in their mission to eradicate Hamas. According to a Lebanese diplomat who talked to the New York Times, Hezbollah has been, quote, quietly telling its partners that it believes that Hamas is in it does not yet need Hezbollah's help. And indeed, Hamas itself has come out and said that they are ready, that they've been preparing for a ground invasion because they have an advantage. Inevitably, this ground invasion will mean luring Israeli soldiers into a labyrinth of densely populated cities where fighters can easily hide and blend in with civilians not to the one part is that i i don't i don't know how well that has worked out for uh the the militants on the ground thus far because ultimately one uh the idf is just like completely completely disinterested in like making distinctions between civilian targets and militants and um and and the civilians that remain in that area are, are you know still still getting bombed relentlessly and being treated like militants in general but also I don't I mean look H Hamas is no matter what like they're still a, a militia with, you know, decent fighting experience, decent combat uh, experience, decent training. But, I mean, they're surrounded now in Gaza City, so all their fighters are either going to be killed or taken prisoner. There is no escape. Yeah. And and it, it doesn't seem like... Um, like, the, the most intense combat so far occurred last night, I believe. And... I think the tunnels are made up. No, they're not. They're not made up. No, those tunnels are very real. They've been blowing up them the, the tunnels nonstop. The most intense fighting happened last night and today, as far as like like actual back and forth. And by my estimation, whatever I I, I know I follow like the the Times of Israel, uh, combat reporter. I do not, it doesn't seem to me like, um, it doesn't seem to me like IDF is, is losing. They obviously have a lot more to lose, but, um, the first, the first week of the ground invasion seemingly looked a lot better for, uh, the, the Palestinian militants. They were taking down, I mean, they were taking out a lot of the, a lot of the equipment. It's very costly. And um, I think on the reservist side, like the loss of 
The loss of one troop on the reservist side is like way more devastating for the morale than the loss of uh, of a uh, militant on the on the Palestinian side because they're used to just being fucking killed ruthlessly. So uh, even with that calculation, where one loss of an IDF soldier seems very uh, seems much worse for uh, Israel than the loss of one Palestinian militant, they still have so much superior air power. Uh, they have they have a you know devastating air superiority that they use regularly, and and thus um, I wouldn't say that their their combat successes are are as apparent as they were in the beginning. You know what I mean? And you notice it probably because like they don't necessarily put out the same kind of. Uh, they're not. They're not showing the same footage like they were in the first week. There was a lot of footage that was coming out, and that footage just stopped on the Hamas side. It could be because they just have, like, you know, they don't have any uh, opportunity to cut videos because they're too busy fighting, but um, I, I don't, it doesn't seem like, at least from what I've seen, it's very one-sided reporting but it doesn't seem like they're doing uh, too great. To mention Hamas's huge network of hundreds of kilometers of underground tunnels where they can hide, store supplies, and store their hostages. The tunnels also have a psychological use, an unseen, unpredictable angle designed to keep enemies wondering when and where they'll be ambushed. For any Israeli ground offensive, this may prove the biggest challenge. It's a truly excruciating kind of warfare in every conceivable sense. This is a quickly changing situation, and I don't know what the conflict looks like when you are watching this. But right now, the bombardment of Gaza continues. The death toll of Palestinians is skyrocketing. The people are running out of food and water and medical supplies. The UN is condemning Israel's response, saying that there's no justification for what Hamas did, but Israel's response is too much. Too many civilians are being killed. Some at the UN are even calling Israel's actions potential war crimes. And the world is calling for a pause in the fighting, a ceasefire that would allow humanitarian aid to get into the Strip. But a ceasefire is something that Israel's prime minister says is not on the table. After the horrific attacks of October 7, calls for a ceasefire are calls for Israel to surrender to Hamas, to surrender to terrorism, to surrender to barbarism. That will not happen. Egypt has just started letting foreign nationals and severely wounded people in the Gaza Strip leave and cross into their country. But they continue to deny entry to the vast majority of Palestinians who remain trapped inside of this small rectangle. But they are, together with Qatar, helping mediate between the sides, already facilitating a deal that released four hostages that Hamas had captured on October 7th. For now, Iran's axis of resistance stands deterred from escalating this any further, continuing small attacks, but calculating that a wider spread conflict isn't worth it, especially as the US moves its troops into position. It is a delicate balance, one that could easily break or spiral. All it takes is one miscalculation, one attack that was meant to be a message, but actually kills dozens of people and elicits a stronger response, which in turn elicits a stronger retaliation, which could lead to an escalation escalation, a spiral into a catastrophic war in the Middle East. And in the middle of this all, people and families who wanted nothing to do with any of this, who don't care about the geopolitical calculations and the balance of power in the Middle East, millions of people confined to a war zone, not sure if the last thing they will ever see is the next airstrike from Israeli jets. Innocent civilian hostages kept in underground tunnels, not sure if they'll ever see their families again. And the families who are mourning the loss of their loved ones, who were taken by this senseless conflict. And at the root of it all, the leaders in charge of protecting their people, but who have instead chosen to pursue policies of division, occupation, violence, and hatred, why is he only showing like Hezbollah and 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 Al Qassam when he's talking about like leaders have only chosen the <laughs> occupation and division is like wh who's occupying who man what the ingredients fuck? that produced this current situation <laughs> So for now we will watch as the Middle East sinks towards deeper and deeper conflict 
and we will hope that level heads will prevail. This was a great video. Uh, I think this was very fair. Johnny, Johnny Harris has a, has a history of covering. I, I'm telling you, man, no matter how swagged out of a white boy you are, no matter how CIA you are, when you fucking go to the West Bank, other than Matty Iglesias, it seems, because I didn't even know he had been to the West Bank, but he has. He's seen it. He's done videos on it. I'm telling you, fuck Johnny Harris. Not fucking fair at all. It's biased as fuck. What do you mean? What are you expecting from, from Johnny? We call him CIA Harris. What the fuck? Don't let Mike from PA hear you. Why? What did he say about this In video? The decision. I think it's as fair as you're going to get from a liberal. Are you kidding me? Maybe my, maybe my frame is like completely readjusted from like all of the most blood uh, thirsty uh, commentary I've heard. In making and that somehow we can prevent more suffering and more loss of life. This is gearing up to be months if not years of conflict in this region and i will be following it and trying to make sense of it for everyone if you want a broader context of what the gaza strip is and what the israeli palestinian conflict is all about which i did not cover in this piece there is a great series called modern conflicts by real life lore where he goes into the roots and the context of this conflict it's very very important to understand I thought it was if decent. you want to try to make sense of what's going on here i don't think when you watch this your takeaway is like Notice how he's manufacturing consent for war with Iran. I don't even think he mentioned it that much. I think like it's, I think his, his assessment was fair. He literally, the only thing I guess, like he even said, uh, it, it, you know, Israel is an extension of American foreign policy in the region. Something along those lines. He alluded to it. I, I no, I, I don't agree. I, I will. I, I think you're. The Modern Conf available exclusively on Nebula, which is a streaming platform that is run by all of us creators. I put all of my videos up there early and ad free, and there's a bunch of exclusive content, including the Modern Conflicts series by Real Life Lore. But there's tons of other coverage of Israel and Palestine, and it's a great way to learn not just about this conflict, but many other conflicts and topics and histories. I mean, on Nebula, there is a huge diversity of really fantastic educational videos. A lot of it exclusive to Nebula, so you can't watch it anywhere else. Last year, like 10,000 of you signed up for this after I talked about it uh, using this like bundle deal that gave you a big discount. That deal is expiring now because it's I'm been doing an ethical react. That's why I'm that letting the ad run. You're not going to um, I guess, like, it objectively anymore. described Once Iran's network of proxies and partners in the Middle East, which Iran and its proxies, such as Hezbollah, literally admit to on us the issue. There yeah, is no, I don't think this is a bad video at all. I think it was it correct. I think, like, the only thing you didn't bring up is, like, if you go there, Hamas radicalization or, like, Palestinian radicalization or... But 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 that's not the goal of this video at all. The goal of this video wasn't to talk about... The goal of this video wasn't to talk about, uh you know, the 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 peace process and how... Uh, many different deals from Israel or Israel's policy towards like Western uh, uh, Israel's policy towards like uh, West Bank settlement expansion, like all of that stuff that is like very important in the grand scheme of things is uh, not, not the, the major feature here. It's not the major feature piece. It's just simply on um, regional proxies and what a continued war would look like. Yeah. If you got nowhere to hide, I'm coming for you. Your parents can never fathom the level I adore you. It's like Palestine up inside of my mind. A deadly war zone quaking inside my boots as you waken every hormone. The broad brush of all these groups are Iran acts is uh, beholden to Iran and directed by Iran is laughable. It's offensive and serves the greater policy interests of the U.S. axis. I think it's a very safe lip take that simply makes uh, sense trying to piece together a big picture narrative but falls apart with a more focused, nuanced analysis of the facts and the relationships. I mean, yeah, these guys aren't like, I mean, I don't, I don't think he, his analysis on that front was reductive, but it's not offensive. I don't think.